This is the OTB Network. Welcome to this week's edition of Horses and Courses. I'm Jean Wood. We've got a great weekend of stakes racing action all around the country, and we're going to head down to South Florida to pick things up at Gulfstream Park, where on Saturday they ran the old hat stakes, a grade two hundred thousand dollars for three-year-old Philly sprinters. They're racing in the old hat. And a little gem goes out to the front. Game face on the outside. Here comes Lovely Island, Indies, Alexandra, and Throbbing Heart. And they're all battling for the lead. Melissa Joe is right behind them. And then comes Elusive Lady. It's three lengths back to Orinokia. And right alongside is Cozy Mesa as they head up the back stretch. Lovely Isle is the pace setter. Throbbing Heart a half length behind. Indies, Alexandra is down at the rail. Then comes a little gem on the far outside. Melissa Joe is in between horses. And the first quarter went. 21 and 4 fifth seconds. Game Face is edging up near the lead on the far outside. It's another four lengths back to Elusive Lady down at the rail. And then comes Cozy Mesa and a little gem, and they're well bunched on the far turn. It is Lovely Isle, Throbbing Heart right alongside. Game Face joins them three deep. Melissa Joe right behind the leaders in fourth. Indies Alexandra is fifth, and down on the inside as they turn for home. Game Face has taken the lead. It's Game Face and John Velasquez. They're moving away. Game face pouring it on here in the final furlong. Six lengths out in front of Melissa Joe, who's been left behind, then Cozy Mesa. It's game face in the old hat. Melissa Joe was second. Ori Nokia ran on for third in Cozy Mesa. Game face, very nice effort by this filly, romping off by seven after having won an allowance race last time out. Over a couple of subsequent winners down in New York, she uh, headed down to South Florida for Todd Pletcher and absolutely romped in graded stakes company over uh, Melissa Joe with Orinokia back in the third spot at, at a huge mutual of over 120 to 1. The winner, Game Face, is a chestnut filly, a daughter of Menifee from Galleon of Gold by Gone West. Bred in Kentucky by Marilyn F. Seltzer and owned by Zabiel Racing International, trained by Todd Pletcher and ridden to victory by John Velasquez, Game Face covers the six and a half furlongs on the fast main track in 115 and 4. We'll head right back down to Gulfstream Park now and Sunday Stakes feature the Grade 3 First Lady for Phillies and Mares sprinting. Unfortunately, the rains came and we had a sloppy track for the running of Sunday's First Lady. In line. They're racing in the First Lady and a slow start for running last. Our girl doesn't bluff on the inside in Marina Ballerina. These two out the best. Bareba came out running in third. Then Princess Janie, Quality Affair, Sugar Swirl, and running last on the inside. Up the back stretch, and Our Girl Doesn't Bluff and Jose Lescano have taken up the running. They're clear by a length over Marina Ballerina. To the outside, it's Princess Janie, and the first quarter went in 21 and 3 fifth seconds. Quality Affair is moving three wide on the turn. Sugar Swirl is four lengths off the lead. Bareba to her inside and running last. Our girl doesn't bluff. On top, midway on the turn, almost a two-length lead over Quality Affair. Sugar Swirl gains ground on her outside. Then Bareba, Marina Ballerina's dropped back and nothing yet from Princess Janie. A 44 and two half mile, and our girl doesn't bluff, turns for home in front. Sugar Swirl now moves up alongside, and Sugar Swirl goes on by. Sugar Swirl taking over and moving clear from our girl doesn't bluff, Bareba's third as Sugar Swirl and Javier Castellano win the first lady. Our girl doesn't bluff with second, Bareba third and quality affair. Sugar Swirl, another one who seems to like the wet racetrack. She certainly is bred well for it and handles it nicely. Two and a half lengths, the better of Our Girl Doesn't Bluff. Another long shot finishing third in Bariba, who rallied uh, from down on the rail to finish third. The winner, Sugar Swirl, is a chestnut mare, a daughter of Touch Gold from Astropi by Distinctive Pro. Bred in Ontario by Adina Springs and owned by the Stronic Stable. She won the very subtle last time out at Churchill Downs late last fall. Prior to that, had run second in the Thoroughbred Club of America at Keeneland. Pretty nice, solid sprinting mare. Handles just about any surface as well. 
for Bri trainer Brian Lynch and rider Javier Castellano, Sugar Swirl. On that sealed sloppy track, completes the six furlongs in 110 flat. We'll continue with stakes racing action in Maryland, where on Saturday afternoon they ran the What a Summer for Philly and Mare Sprinters. And they're off. La Chica Rica, you're flaming me, all giving showing speed, but you're flaming me gradually getting clear now. Length and change from all giving second. La Chica Rica is racing that third spot. The inside, we have Keep On Talking is next in line. Alongside of that is Andreas Pick and Silmaril is last of them all. Silmaril traveling about seven or eight lengths off that brisk flying leader there. You're flaming me into the far turn. Length and change. From La Chica Rica second, All Giving is in third. Another two and a half lengths back in the field. Andreas Pick is on the outside. Keep on talking. And now Silmaril's being asked the question by Jeremy Rose. She's attempting to pick up Phillies on the outside now. She's coming with a three wide bid. As they reach the quarter pole and they turn for home, Silmaril's going to be four or five wide into the stretch. All Giving has cut the corner. La Chica Rica, what time it is? Silmaril the far outside trying to stoke up that rally. Here comes Silmaril with a furlong to go. Silmaril just in front inside the final furlong, defending her title in the What a Summer Stakes, and she's got her million, and she does it in style. Silmaril and Jeremy Rose to win it by two and a half, all giving La Chica Rica keep on talking forth. One of my favorite horses in training, and she is ending her career with this performance, her 16th victory. This is Silmaril with her usual off-the-pace rallying move under a confident Jeremy Rose to pick up the win as the second choice over all giving with La Chica Rica. Back in the third spot, the favorite in the field at odds on was Your Flame and Me, who showed good early speed after being unruly in the gate, faltering late to finish sixth and last in the field. Nice to see Silmaril going out a winner. She crossed the million dollar mark with this victory. And uh, you know, it seems like for the last few years, it seems like just about every month or so, Silmaril would turn up on this program. So she most certainly will be missed by a lot of her fans, but a very nice effort to finish her career. Silmaril, a dark bear brown, seven-year-old daughter of Diamond from Catabuck by Spendabuck, was bred in Maryland by Stephen E. Quick and Christopher Pfeifferick. Owned by the Breeders and trained by Christopher Grove and ridden to victory by Jeremy Rose, Silmaril goes out a winner, covering the six furlongs in 110 and two. We're going to head to the fairgrounds now. They had a great day of racing on Saturday afternoon, and we're going to start things off with the F.W. Gaudin Memorial for Older Sprinters. And they're off in the F.W. Godin Memorial. Island Warrior broke through the gate prior to the start, but going out to the front straight away. Big Lee Small World right there. The red cap of Euro Ears and Storm in Baghdad chiming in from the fence. So three more or less across the track. It's Euro Ears, Storm in Baghdad, and Big Lee Small World in close attendance. And Semaphore Man is close up running in fourth. Some fun fifth. Island Warrior sprinted back to sixth going past the half mile pole. Gunfight has seven lengths to find. And then detached from the main body, late running demarcation trails. The opening quarter, 21 and two, a bullet pace with three furlongs to go. Storm in Baghdad and Euro Ears, those two on even terms at the 5 16th. At the rail is Semaphore Man close up. Bigly Small World out four deep from some fun. Gunfight, seven lengths off the pace coming past the quarter pole. Island Warrior and Demarcation takes the shortest way into the stretch. Half mile in 44 and two, coming down to this final furlong. It's Euro Ears battling Storm in Baghdad. Little between those two. Semaphore Man is fully stretched by Euro Ears and Storm in Baghdad. Neither have an edge. Final half furlong. Storm in Baghdad. Euro Ears in a close run of the Godam Memorial. Ramsey Zimmerman and Euro Ears flawless. Storm in Baghdad just now finished. Semaphore Man a demarcation in 109 and two Euro Ears. An exciting renewal of the Gaudin as Euro Ears maintains his undefeated record going four for four lifetime. He won at Lone Star at Remington on the fairgrounds turf and now on the fairgrounds dirt, drawing away in the, the shadow of the wire by three quarters of a length at just under four to one. Over Storm in Baghdad, who was over four to one in this field, despite being th having won those last three races in a row against similar company, Semaphore Man chases the pace early, holds on for third. The winner, Euro Ears, is a chestnut four-year-old son of Langfuhrer from Unky and Alley by Hef, bred in Kentucky by Gary E. Peterson and Bonnie Peterson, owned by James E. and Marilyn Helzer, trained by William Calhoun and ridden to victory by Ramsey Zimmerman. 
Euro Ears covers the six furlongs in 109 and 2. We'll head to the fairgrounds turf now and the ER Bradley Handicap $100,000 a mile in the 16th for older horses. They're in the gate. And they're off in the Colonel ER Bradley Handicap. Here's Major Rhythm, the Deliberto winner Sterwins. There's no pace early on. Save big money on the outside Optimer, even French Beret, red cap, gold sleeves with one circuit to go. Save big money out to the front by only, but by default from Optimer and French Beret is up and on this sedate early gallop. Major Rhythm running in fourth early on as they turn. Then Sterwins, Sid Cup on the outside, three to four wide, while Gold Sound follows the trail up the rail. Then comes Silverfoot and Storm Treasure. Those two are partnered in last. In the opening quarter, 24 and four, racing onto the back stretch. Robbie Alvarado and Save Big Money by a neck. Corey Mannery has Optimer well up to Save Big Money with five furlongs to go. Two and a half lengths back to French Beret. Being rated along from third, Major Rhythm fourth. Sterwins between horses, Sit Cup. Then comes Gold Sound, Storm Treasure. And uh, alongside Silverfoot remaining last. Now with four furlongs to go on the Colonel ER Bradley Handicap. Half mile in 50 and three as they go to the far side of the course. Save Big Money by a neck to Optimer. Still one, two. Major Rhythm ground saving both terms. French Beret within range. Sturwins trying to pick through between horses. Sturwins now being asked to quicken and Sid Cup has momentum. The brown cap of Sid Cup coming wide as they come toward the quarter pole. Gold Sound is covered up. Storm Treasure wide and Silverfoot is last as they turn for home. Three quarters, 115 and two. Optimer save big money, tackled by French Beret. French Beret strikes the top in the final furlong and a half. Major Rhythm at the rail, Sid Cup, Sterwins between horses. Storm Treasure on the far outside, Gold Sound. Silverfoot up the inside, inside the final half furlong. French Beret's emerged in front as they come up toward the wire. James Graham for Mark Frostad. French Beret has won the Colonel ER Bradley Handicap. Photo for second between Sterwins, Major Rhythm, Say Big Money was there too. French Beret picking up graded stakes credentials here after running third in a fairgrounds allowance race last time out. Stalks the pace at 11 to 1, wins off by a length and three quarters over long shot major rhythm with the favored Sterwins, making a bit of a late move between horses to finish third. The winner, French Beret, is a Bay Gelding, a son of Broad Brush from Misty Mission by Mizwaki. Bred in Ontario by the Samsung Farm and owned by the breeder, trained by Mark Frostad, who always sends out a couple of nice horses at the fairgrounds every year. French Beret covers, un, or under James Graham, rather, covers the mile in the 16th in 145 and 4. We'll head back to the main track now in the running of the Louisiana Handicap, $100,000 a mile in the 16th on the main track. And they're off in the Louisiana Handicap. Steve's double between horses, Port Clyde. Here's Silver Lord going as they make their way through this first furlong. Port Clyde tossing his head about and Gabriel Saez takes the point with Port Clyde, but Silver Lord is close up as they round the first turn from Slew's Tizzy. Steve's double red cap and between horses got the last laugh. Crossword outside that Sandbur. It's five more lengths back to Prom Shoes. And the millionaire, Real Dandy, is running in ninth. The opening quarter, 23 and two, racing on to the back stretch. Port Clyde leans at long odds. Port Clyde by 10 to one, by three quarters of length to Silver Lord. And Steve's double is just waiting in the wings. Steve's double. Well placed for the final five furlongs. Got the last laps. Luz Tizzy is fifth. Crossword sixth. Sandbar is seventh. And then quite a separation back there to Prom Shoes. And Real Dandy still last with a half mile to go in the Louisiana Handicap. Four furlongs up in 46 and three fifth seconds. Going into the far turn. Port Clyde and now Corey Vannery upping the ante with Silver Lord. Silver Lord and Port Clyde on even terms. Steve's double with every chance. At the rail got the last laugh. Crossword and Robbie Alvarado. Five lengths adrift of Silver Lord, who's going for home as they come toward the quarter pole. Got the last laugh, Slew's Tizzy under pressure. Prom Shoes and Real Dandy last to make the top of this daunting fairground stretch. Silver Lord turns them in. Three quarters, 111 and one. Silver Lord has four lengths to hold in the final furlong. Silver Lord still finding Steve's double fully extended. Crossword, Prom Shoes, Real Dandy from out of the backfield. It's Silver Lord at the 16th, still clear. Prom Shoes, far outside, Real Dandy up toward the wire. Corey Lattery and Silver Lord. Silver Lord in the Louisiana handicap from Prom Shoes. Real Dandy third, Steve's double fourth, and Crossword was fifth. Silver Lord and Corey Lannery with a two-length victory on or near the pace every step of the way. In fact, right off the early pace set by Port Clyde. 
took over fairly early and romped by two, kept to his business by Corey Lannery as prom shoes made a futile effort to rally into second. Also rallying from far back was Real Dandy, who put in a huge bid from last to third under Sean Bridgmahan. The winner, Silver Lord, is now three for four lifetime. He won a fairgrounds allowance last time out. Looks like an interesting horse to keep your eye on. Silver Lord, a gray or own son of unbridled song from What a Miss by Ms. Walkie, was bred in Kentucky by Pollock Farms and Taylor Made Farm. Owned by Bowman Couch Racing Limited and trained by Steve Asmussen, ridden to victory by Corey Lannery, Silver Lord covers the mile in a 16th in 143 and 3. We'll head right back down to the fairgrounds in the Dr. A.B. Legio Memorial. $100,000, fillies and mares sprinting on the turf. Away and running, flying circle breaks well. Cat on a cloud showing plenty of pace. Here's Cat on a cloud going to the front straight away. Hot landing in the red cap, grabs that second spot. And Smitty Sunshine is well placed running in third. Killing in fourth, Saoirse Cat fifth. Flying circle broke well. Now six between horses going past the half mile pole. Then Bewitching Miss and Dancer of the Realm has dropped back to last. They now go toward the far turn. Cat on a cloud and Jamie Terrio in front. The opening quarter, 22 and 1 fifth seconds. Cat on a cloud being tailed by Smitty Sunshine and Robbie Alvarado and Smitty Sunshine poised to go after that leader coming toward the quarter pole. Hot Atlantic third. Killing now switched out. Then Saoirse Cat. Bewitching Miss on the far outside, Dance of the Realm, and Flying Cloud is last into the stretch. Smitty Sunshine now has come away in front of Cat on the Cloud, deep in the final furlong and a half. Cat on the Cloud steadied, switched out. Smitty Sunshine jinx over toward those rails. Dance of the Realm coming up the fence with a big run. Kindling down inside his Flying Circle, inside the final yards. Dance of the Realm has come up the rail. Late run by Flying Circle. Dance of the Realm, Amiga made a first from Flying Circle. Kindling third, Bewitching Miss fourth. Then Saoirse Cat and Smitty Sunshine. Dancer of the Realm and Miguel Mina on a firm turf course, picking up a length and a half off the pace, nine to one victory uh, over Flying Circle with 10 to one shot kindling, tracking the pace being out kicked a little bit late to pick up the third spot. The winner, Dancer of the Realm, was second time off the layoff, won an allowance, non-winners of two, sprinting here on the turf last time out, seems to handle this fairgrounds turf quite nicely, and picks up yet another victory. Dancer of the Realm is a bay mare, a daughter of King of Kings, from now Dance by Sovereign Dancer. Bred in Great Britain by R.L. Lister and owned by the breeder, trained by Malcolm Pearson, ridden to victory by Miguel Mina. Dancer of the Realm covers the five and a half on the turf in 104 and two. We'll head into three-year-old's company now, beginning with the three-year-old fillies in the Tiffany Lass at a flat mile. And they're off in the Tiffany Lass. Tis Aquina heads out toward the lead. Jolie the Cat breaks well. Syriana's song, Alina toward the inside, Diamond Air. Timely reflection, Red Cap caught four to five wide as they turn and toward the inside a ground saving highest class. So around the first turn, James Graham and Jolie the Cat going out to the front. Jolie the Cat in front of Tizaquina, who tracks her. Timely reflection coming up wide. In between Phillies, Alina, Diamond Air, highest class, has room down there at the fence and is being sent on through. And Syria Song has dropped back to last. In the opening quarter, 24 and 3. So now five furlongs from the first line. And it's Jolie the Cat by a length. Jamie Terrio has Tizaquina tracking that, followed by Timely Reflection, highest class fourth at the rail. Diamond Air is fifth, but close up. And then comes Alina and Syriana's Song Trails. Six lengths from leader to last as they go toward the far turn. The half for Jolie the Cat in 48 and four. Jolie the Cat and Tizaquina is close in tow, going into the far turn. Highest class just in back of the front. Followed on the outside by Timely Reflection, wide both turns. Diamond Air between Phillies, three lengths off these leaders. Now with a couple of furlongs to go on the Tiffany Lass. And then comes Alina and Hard Ridden. Syriana Song is last as they come toward the top of the stretch. Three quarters, 113 and three. They turn for home, Tis Aquina and Jolie the Cat. So now this is the final furlong. Jolie the Cat with Stephanie Resolve. Tis Aquina battles her in the final 16th. Highest class stays on at one pace. Racing up to the 16th pole finish. It's Jolie the Cat. James Graham for Steve Asmussen. Jolie the Cat and the Tiffany last from Tis Aquina. Highest class third and Diamond Dare. Finish fourth. 
Jolie the Cat picking up the win here for who else but Steve Asmussen. Under James Graham, she gets to the front early and romps home by two and a half lengths at four to one over the favored Tiz Aquina, who did bobble the brake just a little bit, got into the race fairly early, but uh, I assume that uh, her rider Jamie Terrio was thinking that that front runner was going to come back. Highest class rallies to third. Jolie the Cat, a recent maiden breaker here at the fairgrounds, is a three-year-old dark bay or brown filly, a daughter of Taylor the Cat from Pleasant Jolie by Pleasant Colony. Bred in Kentucky by High Lake Broad Racing Stable and owned by High Lake Broad and JMJ Racing Stables. Trained by Steve Asmussen and ridden to victory by James Graham, Jolie the Cat covers the mile at the fairgrounds in 138 and 2. We'll head back to three-year-olds at a mile, this time for the Colts in the Grade 3 LeCompte. And they're off. The dart breaks well. He's easy, showing good speed from Z Fortune. Mad flatter toward the inside Texas Fever with that green cap. On the outside, Macho again. And then comes Blackberry Road. And Star Defender is last as they enter the first turn. The Darp going out to the front. The Darp leads in the LeCompte from Texas Fever, and he's easy a joint second. Mad Flatters, well spotted, running in fourth. Z Fortune fifth. Macho again is outside of Z Fortune as they race onto the backstretch. Blackberry Road, some eight lengths off that leader, and Star Defender running in eighth. The opening quarter for the Darp, 24 and one fifth seconds. Now five furlongs to the 16th pole finish. The Darp by three quarters of length to He is Easy, and Texas Fever is well up running in third. Texas Fever under keen restraint. Mad Flatter in the clear on the outside, followed by Z Fortune, who's in behind horses. Macho again, five lengths off the pace. Then still four more lengths back to Blackberry Road, who's one from the back, and Star Defender trails. Half mile for the DARP in 48 and one, going into the far turn, and he's easy, now going for broke. He's easy in front of the DARP. Mad Flatter being asked to pick up three lengths with two furlongs to go. Texas Fever driven at the rail. Z Fortune, Macho again. They're both four lengths adrift. Now with under two furlongs to go. Blackberry Road has seven lengths to find. And Star Defender never challenged. They're into the stretch. Three quarters, one, 12, and four. This is the final furlong. Z Fortune between horses. Mad Flatter just strikes the top. Under pressure, the Darp and he's easy battles on. Far outside, Blackberry Road being produced. Final 16th, Z Fortune led. Blackberry Road on the outside. Z Fortune on to three in a row. Z Fortune, Sean Bridgerhan for a Steve Asmussen stakes triple. Blackberry Road second, photo for third between he's easy, Mad Flatter, and the Darp weekend. Z Fortune, you may remember this horse if you follow New York Racing, yet another undefeated horse on this weekend's edition of Horses and Courses, as Z Fortune runs his record to three for three lifetime with an off-the-pace two and three-quarter length victory at five to one over the lukewarm three to one choice Blackberry Road. Another horse coming in off a couple of very nice races was Mad Flatter, who ran well to finish third while competing wide. The winner, Z Fortune, broke his maiden at Belmont Park, came back in an aqueduct inner track uh, overnight stakes race, and has now has run his record integrated stakes company three for three. Z Fortune is a gray or roan son of Siphon from Fortunate Faith by Fortunate Prospect. Bred right here in New York by the Delahanty Stock Farm and owned by Zayat Stables Limited, trained by Steve Asmussen and ridden to victory by Sean Bridgemahan. Z Fortune covers the mile at the fairgrounds in 137 and 3. We'll pause for a brief message, and when we return, we'll be heading to Southern California for some terrific stakes racing action from Santa Anita. Please stay with us.
Welcome back to Horses and Courses. We're going to continue now in Southern California where that main cushion track at Santa Anita looked like it had been groomed into the consistency of about the five freeway. We're going to see a lot of very fast times coming out of Southern California this weekend and we will begin in the grade three San Rafael for three-year-olds. And away they go. Sierra Sunset, talk of a cat break very fast and massive drama sprints up on the outside. Algato Marlo content to let those three sprint away early is taken back into the fourth position. Overbed is now towards the rear with Indian Sun at the back, eight lengths off the leaders. They go to the three-quarter pole and massive drama. Went very fast early. Ryder trying to slow them down a little now is in front. But here comes Talk of a Cat to keep the pressure on. Talk of a Cat and massive drama. They go on now. They're both making each other pick it up down the back stretch. Sierra Sunset is a close-up third. A big gap of six back to El Gato Marlo, who's perfectly positioned. Now just letting those other three go on with it. Come and catch them later if he can. Second last is Overbid and Indian Sun trails. Half mile to go in the San Rafael now, and it's massive drama, not getting a breather. Talk of a cat, breeze down his neck in second. Sierra Sunset, the rider's actually riding him from third now as he tries to keep the pressure on them. A big gap of seven lengths further back to Al Gato Malo, Overbird and Indian Sun. Coming to the quarter pole, his top three are slowing down noticeably. Massive drama, desperate to hold on now. In the second spot, Talk of a Cat tries to go on with it. Down the center, Sierra Sunset. Al Gato Malo got dead aim. And here comes Al Gato Malo, looking like he just jumped in at the quarter pole. But you can see this one setting up beautifully. Another masterful ride from David Flores. Did everything right. And El Gato Marlo rumps in the San Rafael. Indian Sun second, then massive drama. Sierra Sun said, talk of a cat. And Overbed was last. El Gato Malo, congratulations. We've got some local connections. I know at least one uh, person who is in our viewing area does uh, own a share in this horse as a partner in the West Point group that has invested in El Gato Malo. And uh, this horse is now another one, three for three. Another undefeated horse on this weekend's edition of the program as he kicks clear to a romping six and a quarter length victory at a tick under five to two over long shot Indian Sun with the favored massive drama getting involved in a little bit of a duel in the early going with talk of a cat and holding on to finish third. The winner, El Gato Malo, broke his maiden in Southern California, won a stake in Northern California last time out, now heads into grade three company. This is essentially the first step on the Triple Crown Trail for many of the three-year-olds in Southern California, and El Gato Malo has taken that first step in fairly easy fashion. El Gato Malo is a dark bear brown gelded son of El Corridor from One Bad Cat by Mountain Cat. Bred in Kentucky by Kenneth C. Roberts and owned by West Point Thoroughbreds. Trained by Craig DeLossi and ridden to victory by David Flores, El Gato Malo sets a new track record for the mile in 133 and 1. We'll head right back to Southern California now in the Grade 2 San Pasqual for four year olds and up. And away they go. Zapper, arson squad, and well-armed all came out well. Well-armed is going to go on to lead them. Heat Seeker down on the inside is in the fourth spot, followed by Racketeer, Thousand Words, second last, and Molengo quite content to just lope along at the back, seven off the leaders. Into the turn they go, and well-armed, not in any hurry at all here. Ears pricked, he's really just cantering them along as well-armed. He goes clear two and a half. Zapper is in second, arson squad. Heat Seeker's and tight hold down at the rail, now back to fourth. Thousand words as well, mouth wide open, taking a strong hold out here, is tugging his way along, six off these leaders. On the outside of that comes Racketeer and four back to Malangal. Past the five eights they go, and it's still well on. Clear on his own, he's by three now. Zappa second, Arson Squad third, then Heat Seeker. Thousand words towards the back of the leading group, and Racketeer is six lengths off the leader. And then there's still another four back to Malangal. 
Into the far turn they go now in the San Pasquale and it's still well on, just bounding along on the lead. He has it by two lengths, Zappers in second. Austin Squad third, then Heat Seeker, thousand words. Malengau's made an early run. Malengau made a fast early run at them and alongside Racketeer. A quarter of a mile to go now and well armed is still the one to catch. He sent about his business and he responds gamely. Well armed in front, just over length, Zappa. Thousand words. Malengau's run did not last. Racketeer behind that. Coming for home now. And here's Zappa. And Zappa is up alongside a well armed. But it's Zappa taking the advantage. And Zappa's going to cause an upset in the San Pasquale. Zappa has won it. Well armed was second. Heat seeker third. And Thousand words finish four. Zappa. This is a horse who was a $32,000 claim in Northern California last spring. Second two races back in the Tanferan in Northern California. Won a Hollywood allowance last time out. Now completes the move up into grade two stakes company with a victory by a length at 13 to 1 over the front running well armed with Heat Seeker coming off a victory last month finishing third. The winner, Zappa, is a Bay Gelding, a son of Afternoon Delights from Julie's Angel by Theatrical. Bred in Kentucky by Madeline A. Paulson and Ernest Moody. Owned by Gary and Cecil Barber and trained by John Sadler. Written to victory by Joel Rosario. Zappa completes the mile in a 16th and a new track record time, 139 and 2. We'll head right back to Southern California now in the San Fernando for four-year-olds. Hill for the San Fernando sent on their way. Johnny Eves bounced away smoothly and goes straight to the lead. Big Bad Leroy Brown, Air Commander's right there as well. So is Monzante. Sahara Heat going to be caught about four wide. Tiago going to drop in behind them. Smooth and Savvy's also hooked wide as they line up into the turn. Ravel is down at the rail, five lengths off them. Then comes Frank the Barber. We drop back to Great Hunter, who's second last. And hurry up, Austin gives them 12 lengths start. They go to the three-quarter pole and Johnny Eves out where he likes to be, showing the way out here and he's sitting a quick pace as well. He's nice and relaxed though. Johnny Eves goes along in front by just over two. Air Commander tracking in second, Sahara Heat is third. Big Bad Leroy Brown at the rail is six off these leaders. Here's Tiago on his own in the fifth position. Behind that comes Monzante. Ravel traveling nicely in the blue colors, gives them eight length start. Then we come back to Smooth and Savvy in the red cap. Frank the Barber at the back of the leading group, a gap of four to Great Hunter and hurry up Austin who had 12 off the leader. They go to the three eights and Johnny E still not being troubled on the lead has it just over length to Air Commander. Now Tiago moves up to take third and Tiago coming to take them on. Zahara Heat's got to find more. Frank the Barber on the outside. Big bad Leroy Brown's dropping out. Ravel, Great Hunter starting to run on from behind. At the top of the lane in the San Fernando. Johnny Eves taken on by Air Commander. Tiago's got to quicken from third now. Ravel running on behind that. Past the eight pole, Air Commander, Johnny Eves finds more on the inside. Johnny Eves now got a heart as big as the track as he comes back at Air Commander. Tiago third. Air Commander. Johnny Eves going to hit it together. Johnny Eves. Air Commander above the nose. Maybe Johnny Eves, but Air Commander. That one's very close. Tiago third. Then Sahara Heat and Ravel. Air Commander, you may remember this guy from a second place finish in last year's running of the San Felipe. And if you liked him that day, congratulations if you stayed with him because he won at 52 to 1 on Saturday afternoon. In the interim, he had gone to the sidelines, come back with two modest performances in allowance company. And here I have to say he may have surprised everybody, including his trainer Bob Baffert, who didn't have one of his usual main go-to guys aboard. Aaron Greider was aboard for the victory. It's certainly nice to see Aaron back in the winner's circle as well. Air Commander sat a perfect trip just off the early pace set by Johnny Eves, who was coming in off a grade one win in the Malibu, going shorter, stretched out, wasn't quite able to hold off the eventual winner. Good old Tiago with his normal mo move from off the pace did run third. A little closer to the early pace was Tiago, however, on Saturday. Typically well back in the field here, running sixth in the early going, made up a little bit of ground while running three wide. The winner, Air Commander, a four-year-old bay son of Point Given from Santeria by Stardenaskra, was bred in Kentucky by Robert N. Clay and the Fairway Equine Limited, owned by uh, Robert Clay and Faisal Salman, trained by Bob Baffert and ridden to victory by Aaron Greider. Air Commander surprises everyone, $106 mutual under Aaron Greider, covering the mile in a 16th in 1 minute 40 flat. 
We'll head into Sunday's card at Santa Anita. Again, a full stakes program because they did miss last weekend's stakes racing action because of the weather. First up, grade two three-year-old fillies in the Santa Inez. And away they go. The five runners came out smoothly. Indian Blessing and Piceno are quicker center stride along the inside. Champagne Eyes now coming through to join them at the rail. Izara is right there in fourth. Those four tightly grouped and then a gap of four and a half back to Golden Dark A. They go to the E5 eights and as expected it's Indian Blessing showing the way but is getting company from Piceno only a neck back in second. Now there's a gap of two back to Champagne Eyes in third. Izara is quite content to sit there in the fourth position. Now four and a half off that leader. And then there's another gap of five back to Golden Dark A. Less than a half mile to go in the Santa Inez now, and Indian Blessing starts to open up on them. Indian Blessing not being asked, but is just pulling her way clear now. Leads it by two lengths. Piscino is in second. Then Champagne Eyes. Izara is now seven off the leader, and Golden Dark A running on last. A quarter of a mile to go, and let's see, Indian Blessing still clear. Golden Dock A is probably going to be the danger, running on down at the rail now. Heads a turn for home, Indian Blessing by four lengths. Golden Dock A running a game one from second, coming to take a run now. Indian Blessing now being asked to fully extend. Golden Dock A closing the gap in the center of the track. Indian Blessing holding on, Golden Dock A catching down the center. Indian Blessing is going to have... Golden Dark A, Piscino was served. Indian Blessing, last year's champ, returns another unbeaten horse. Four for four is Indian Blessing as she turns three with a victory and a uh, rather desperate victory at that as Golden Dock A rallies to finish in the second spot, only ahead behind the eventual winner. Piscino completes the order of the top three after pressing the eventual winner in the early going. Of course, Indian Blessing, a filly blessed with natural good early speed, got out of the gate beautifully for Garrett Gomez, relaxed nicely and destroyed. But uh, who would have expected this time, and especially these fractions, 22.27, that's understandable. 43.76, 107.14, as I mentioned. That Santa Anita Cushion track was running quite about like the five freeway. In fact, it was a very, very quick racetrack, and Indian Blessing is going to come home with an yet another track record. Indian Blessing is a dark bay or brown filly, a three-year-old daughter of Indian Charlie from Shameful by Flying Chevron, bred in Kentucky by Hal Earnhardt and Patty Earnhardt, owned by the Breeders and trained by Bob Baffert, ridden to victory by Garrett Gomez. Indian Blessing covers the seven furlongs. Wow, 119 and four. We'll head right back to Santa Anita and the running on Sunday afternoon of the Santa Isabel for three-year-old fillies at a mile and a sixteenth. And away they go. All came out smoothly. Grace Anatomy, Casamira from the inside gates and turn away. Inside three lining up on the lead now. Rareville going to drop into the four spot. Did its initiation and final fling is the early trailer. Seven lengths would cover them all. Into the turn they go, and now turn away. Goes off to make her own pace. Not in any hurry out here. Leads it a length and a half to Grace Anatomy. And going on with it now is Casamira is going, kicking on to lead. Casamira, Grace Anatomy, turn away. Then we come back to final fling down at the rail, and the far side is initiation. They move on to the back stretch now, and Kaza Myra still in front by a length, being tracked by Grace Anatomy in the second spot. Another length and a half to turn away in third. They followed by final fling, initiation, and still the trailer now is Rareville, but only five lengths covers the lot. They have a half mile left to go, no change in this order. Kaza Myra still takes them along a half a length in front of Grace Anatomy. Coming through down at the rail now is final fling to be a joint third. Between horses we have initiation, turn away on the far side are still two off the leaders, and then two and a half back to Rareville. Tightly bunched as they come to the quarter pole. None of them kicking on for home just yet. Grace Anatomy now does get let loose, though, and Grace Anatomy takes the advantage. Casamira is in the second spot, being eased as turn away. The favorite turn away, eased out of it. Turn away is dropped out last. They come for home. Grace Anatomy, Casamira coming after them. Final fling coming with a late run. Grace Anatomy is the leader. Final fling coming home, stormingly down the center of the track now. A 16th to go, and final fling's got Grace Anatomy. And it's going to be final fling and Joe Talibo to take the Santa Isabel to Grace Anatomy. Casamira was third, and then Rareville. 
final fling, pulling off a bit of an upset, 10 to 1 win here. Off a Calbred Maiden special weight last time out, she won by a length and a quarter over Grace Anatomy, who had some pretty nice experience with good fillies. Early pacemaker Casimira holds on for third. A little bit of trouble in here for number three turn away. The odds on choice did uh, have some problems dropping back, leaving the turn, and was eased into the stretch. Uh, apparently was vanned off, and unfortunately I was not able to get a report as of Monday morning of her condition, but uh, certainly that would be a considerable loss to the three-year-old Philly division as she was a very, very nice Philly if in fact uh, she has suffered some sort of an injury. So hopefully whatever it was is something that can be handled. The winner, however, looked pretty nice uh, off of that maiden victory under Joe Talamo. Final fling is a three-year-old daughter of Bertrando from Lilia Bell by Java Gold. Bred in California by William R. Peoples and owned by Michael House. Trained by Jeff Mullins. Ridden to victory by Joe Talamo. Final fling covers the mile in the 16th and 141 and 4. We'll head back to Santa Anita Sunday afternoon's running of the Grade 2 El Encino for four-year-old fillies. And away they go. Zenyatta a little slow to get going. Dawn after dawn broke away well. Tough to assist is right there. Fleet Caroline on the outside. No early speed at all. They're just cantering in the first furlong. Romance's Diane is in there, then indescribable. Zenyatta is last, but only four lengths off the lead. Sorted themselves out now as they go past the 7 8 pole. And tough Tizis is in front, but on a tight hold. Not in any hurry whatsoever. Romance's Diane goes up to race second. Dawn after dawn at the rail is third. Fleet Caroline is in the fourth spot. Only two and a half off the leaders. And it looks like the saddle slipped forward a bit on dawn after dawn. Now the rider's just letting her run along. And that certainly has quickened the tempo as they go on to the back stretch now. Then we come back to Indescribable. And Zenyatta is now last. Five off the leader. They go to the half mile pole and dawn after dawn has ensured now a reasonable pace as they go past the half mile. She's in front by a length. Tough Tizzis is right there in second on the far side. Romance is Diane. Then back to indescribable Freed Caroline. And let's see, Zenyatta has started an early run now. Zenyatta's on the outside, still five off the leader. They come to the 5 16 and it's still dawn after dawn, the leader, tough to assist, breeze down her next second. In behind those is Fleet Caroline. Zenyatta is now having to be ridden along from four. She's going to have to come down the grandstand side. They turn for home. Dawn after dawn shifts out, but is a narrow leader. Tough to assist between them. Down the center, romances Diane, and now Zenyatta's lengthening her stride. And Zenyatta closing big grounds on the outside now. And Zenyatta just an amazing coverage of ground. She just covers so much ground with those bounding strides. And Zenyatta wins it. Tufts as assist with second. Romance is Diane third and dawn after dawn four. Zenyatta, yet another unbeaten horse. This one three for three. A sister to Balance, who won an allowance race last time out, rallies from off the pace to a length and a quor three quarter victory over Tough Tis Assist and Romance is Diane. The winner is Zenyatta, a dark bay or brown filly, a daughter of Street Cry from Vertigenu by Chris S., who is bred in Kentucky by Maverick Production Limited, owned by Mr. and Mrs. Jerome Moss, and trained by John Sheriffs, ridden to victory by David Flores. Zenyatta covers the mile on the 16th and 140 and 3. We'll pause for one more brief message and we'll return with a look at the weekend's worth of stakes racing action from New York.
Welcome back to Horses and Courses. We're going to continue now at the Big A. We'll head back to last Wednesday and the running of the Fiesta Lady for four-year-old Philly Sprinters. And they're off. Ticket to Seattle, out for the early lead. Golden Dawn right there on the outside and Ghost Dancing is a close-up third. A break of three lengths to the two trailers, Meadow Breeze, and Dicey Girl up the back stretch. Now Ticket to, Se to Seattle takes the lead. Ticket to Seattle by a length. Golden Dawn is second and on the outside. It's Ghost Dancing. The opening quarter was 22 and one fifth seconds. Ticket to Seattle leads into the far turn. Golden Dawn in second with Ghost Dancing on the outside in third. A length and a half to Meadow Breeze and another length to Dicey Girl. Ticket to Seattle, holding on to the lead here as they come for the top of the stretch. Golden Dawn putting up the pressure now on the outside. It's Ticket to Seattle and Golden Dawn. And Golden Dawn has taken over the lead. Golden Dawn quickly in front by almost three lengths. Ticket to Seattle back running in second. Then Meadow Breeze and Ghost Dancing. Golden Dawn sharp here. Golden Dawn's going to win by seven lengths. And it looked like Meadow Breeze got up for second over the favorite ticket to Seattle. Golden Dawn picking up the win under Channing Hill. She's had a couple of layoffs, but has never run a poor race in here. Romps off by six over grade one winner Meadow Breeze with ticket to Seattle back in the third spot. The winner, Golden Dawn, is a chestnut daughter of Hennessy from Paved in Gold by Carson City. Bred in Kentucky by Brian Scott Dance and owned by Marty Cunningham. Trained by Mike Hushin and ridden to victory by Channing Hill. Golden Dawn covers the six furlongs on the Aqueduct Dinner in 109 and 4. We'll head into New York Bread Company for Friday afternoon's running of the Ruby Rubles for fillies and mares. And they're off. Towering escape, a break sharply on the outside. Tamburino was away well, and it's Tamburino. And towering escape heads apart for the lead with Karakorum Starlet just behind in third. One tough bell, a close up fourth. Light tactic is fifth, and it's a break of 10 lengths back to Lauren Tide Ice, who trails the field in sixth. The opening quarter, 22 and one fifth seconds. It's Tamburino on the inside, leading by three quarters of a length. Karakorum Starlet on the outside is running in second. Then one tough bell down at the rail. Light tactic alongside. Towering escape has dropped back to fifth. Farther back, it's Lauren Tide Ice, and the field is at the head of the stretch. And Karakorum Starlet has taken over. Karakorum Starlet in front. Here's light tactic on the outside. And one tough bell at the rail. Karakorum Starlet leads by two. Light Tactic is second, then one tough bell. Lauren Tide Ice putting in a late run with a 16th to the finish. It is Kara Coram Starlet in front. Lauren Tide Ice takes second. Kara Coram Starlet wins by two. Lauren Tide Ice closed to get second. Light Tactic was third. Kara Coram Starlet, this is a horse that has really come to hand very nicely. She was a very nice horse early in her career, had a little bit of a setback, took a while to come back, and now seems to be in outstanding form. She, was in, she ran second in the Interborough on the 1st of January, returned in very short order here to pick up this win by two lengths as the favorite over the late-moving Lauren Tide Ice with the second choice in the betting light tactic, part of the entry in here from the uh, Albert Fried and Rick Schossberg combination running third. Karakorum Starlet is a possible contender now for the Barbara Fritchie down at Laurel next month and uh, certainly looks like she has earned that spot. Karakorum Starlet is a chestnut mare, a daughter of Skip Away from Amaryllis by Cormorant. Bred in New York by Jim Jam Thoroughbreds and Marvin Little Jr. and owned by the Karakorum Farm, trained by Jeff Odins and ridden to victory by Stu Elliott, who seems to fit her very nicely. Karakorum Starlet covers the six furlongs in 111 and 4. We'll head back into Stakes Company on Saturday afternoon. Phillies and mares in the affectionately. And they're off. Baby Bird on the outside. Lucky Revival and Elisa at the rail. Elisa has the early lead. Lucky Revival is racing in second. And now Stage Luck uh, moves up on the inside of uh, Baby Bird. They move into the clubhouse turn. Alisa is in front by a length. Lucky Revival racing in second. 
Stage luck at the rail, and on the outside, Baby Bird. A break of two and a half lengths. The victory pool in fifth. Dinner break the outside in sixth. Homer Red is next to last, and Runway Rosie at the back. The opening quarter mile in 23 and two fifth seconds, and they're heading up the back stretch, and Elisa is in front by three quarters of a length. Lucky Revival in between horses in second. Baby Bird in the clear on the outside third. Stage luck at the rail in fourth. Two lengths to dinner break and victory pool. Runway Rosie and Homerette opening half mile went in 48 seconds. They approach the far turn. Still Elisa on the lead here. It's Elisa by three quarters of a length. Lucky Revival in second. Length and a half. Stage luck runs in third. Baby Bird fourth. Now five or six lengths from the lead. Uh, then comes a Runway Rosie. They turn for home, three quarters went in one, 12 and two. It is a lucky revival on the outside of Elisa. Lucky revival and Elisa heads apart for the lead. Stage luck is third, then runway Rosie, Baby Bird and Homerette inside the 16th pole. Elisa gets clear again. A late run here from stage luck. Stage luck and Elisa look like stage luck got there. It'll be a photo. Stage luck, Elisa and Baby Bird. Stage luck, running a record to three for four lifetime with a neck victory over the front running Elisa was in here uh, under Ramon Dominguez and looked like she might be able to get there, but the ground saving trip by Stu Elliott gets stage luck into the winner's circle. Baby Bird completes the top three. The winner stage luck, a gray or roan filly, a daughter of unbridled song from Golden Ballet by Moscow Ballet, was bred in Kentucky by Aaron and Marie Jones, owned by Darley Stable and trained by Tom Albertrani. Ridden to victory by Stu Elliott, stage luck covers the mile in the 16th on the Aqueduct Dinner in 144 and 3. One more stakes race to bring to you from the Big A Sunday afternoon's running of the Buzanda for three-year-old fillies. And they're off. Wonder who's best breaks sharply from the outside and has got the early lead. A Sunday elegance at the rail. DJ Lightning is running in third with Sumptuous in fourth. Then Paint Me Red in fifth and Laporta at the back in sixth as they round the clubhouse turn. Now Sunday elegance has come through on the inside to take the lead from Wonder Who's Best. Sunday elegance steps away to lead by two. DJ Lightning. DJ Lightning is being pulled up at the back of the pack. DJ Lightning is at the uh, back of the pack, actually still just galloping along here, not being pulled up as yet, but he has, uh, the filly has gone to the back and now being pulled up by jockey Rajiv Marad. They continue up the back stretch, and it is Sunday Elegance in front by almost four. Wonder Who's Best is in second. La Porta at the rail, Sumptuous on the outside, and Paint Me Red is fifth, the half in 48 seconds. Sunday Elegance in front by two. Wonder Who's Best is second by two lengths. La Porta and Sumptuous right together third and fourth. And Paint Me Red is fifth. Wonder Who's Best has gone on to take the lead now from Sunday Elegance. Three quarters in one, 13 and one. Wonder Who's Best comes into the stretch with the lead. Wonder Who's Best, a bit erratic there in the stretch, but holding on to the lead. La Porta moving into second and Paint Me Red is closing on the outside. Here's Paint Me Red and Sumptuous now going by. Wonder who's best. Paint Me Red and La Porta heads apart for the lead and it's Paint Me Red to win it. La Porta was second, Sumptuous third. Paint Me Red, up from Florida for Gary Contessa, apparently a private purchase by the Winning Moves Stable, and uh, looked like a pretty good way to start things out. She ran third in the three ring at Calder last time out, and prior to that had run second in Florida Stallion Series competition. Here rallies from off the pace to win by a neck after having steadied into the first turn. La Porta runs well also from off the pace to run second, with Sumptuous back in the third spot. The winner, Paint Me Red, is a chestnut daughter of Red Bullet from Queen St. West by St. Martin, or by Smartin, bred in Florida by the Adena Springs Farm and owned by Winning Move Stable, D'Amico, Pettigrew, Manella, and Celebrity Group Stables, ridden to Vic or I'm sorry, trained by Gary Contessa and ridden to victory by Ramon Dominguez. Paint Me Red covers the mile in 70 yards in 144 flat. 
that'll wrap up this edition of Horses and Courses. Thank you very much for joining us. We hope you'll be able to join us again next time as we take a look at stakes racing action from around the country. Until then, I'm Jean Wood. Have a great week at the races.